Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I've been continuing my testing of the iPhone 13 Pro and today we're going to be looking at battery life and sustained performance. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So hopefully you've had a chance to look at my other comparison videos. Here on this main channel, I've got the iPhone 12 versus the iPhone 13 Pro using Speedtest G, which shows how much faster the A15 Bionic is compared to the A14 Bionic. And over on the Speedtest G channel, I have two videos, one comparing the iPhone 13 Pro with the OnePlus 9 Pro, and another one comparing it with the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. So do pop over there if you want to see how iOS is doing with Android nowadays. Now in this video, I want to look at the battery life and the sustained performance of the iPhone 13 Pro. So let's start with the battery life. I've done two major battery tests here. The first one is I took a YouTube video uh, 2K and I played it until the battery went flat to see how many hours of video playback you can get on the iPhone 13 Pro. And if you look here at this graph, you can see that the battery usage is fairly even. It's a fairly straight line going down from 100% to it almost ran out at about 3%, I think it was. And as you can see there, you get over 11 hours of YouTube video playback in a high resolution. And this is with the brightness at about 50%. So that is a good result. Of course, watching a YouTube video is relatively easy for modern day smartphones. All it has to do is do a bit of CPU stuff to talk to the radio to get the Wi-Fi, get the data down, and then the video basically gets passed over to dedicated uh, video decoders, and that's all there is to it. And as you can see, that actually offers a good battery life. But what about something more intensive like 3D gaming? Well, here is a graph for 3D gaming. And as you can see, again, a fairly straight uh, line, which means that it's consistent in how much battery is being used. But you look at the time here, it's just over three and a half hours. Three and a half hours is kind of be the maximum. So it's a very, very different story from intense 3D gaming to watching YouTube videos. Now that means that your usage in an average day is gonna be somewhere between the two, somewhere between three and a half hours and 10, 11 hours, just depending on what you're doing. But it does really just highlight the fact that it is dependent on the workload you are running. And as you can see in this video, if running all that workload, you were able to get about three and a half hours and then your battery will go flat. So if you wanna have a long battery life during the day, avoid 3D gaming. Now, actually, that statement, avoid 3D gaming, is probably true for just about every smartphone, whether it's iOS or whether it's Android. It is one of the biggest things that drains the battery. In fact, when I want to drain the battery on a phone, that's exactly what I do. I run a 3D demo, and that drains the battery the quickest, because obviously, three and a half hours compared to 11 hours, I wouldn't do it so quick if I was using a YouTube video. Okay, so that's the battery life for you. Now, what about sustained performance? Well, for the sustained performance test, what I did was I ran, again, that 3D gaming, and each 20 minutes or so, I ran speed test G to see whether the performance had changed, and I also took the temperature on the back of the device. So as you can see, it's the same time frame, that three and a half hours. And when you initially run speed test G on a cold device, that's 23 degrees C there, you'll see. Then it's just under 55 seconds. Then after it's been running for 20 minutes, the temperature has shot up to around 39 degrees and the device has slowed now with speed test G to 59 seconds. However, from here, things are really pretty stable. All the way along here is 57 seconds, 57 seconds, 57 seconds. There's another 59 that appears in there, but basically the performance remained stable. Not as fast as it is when it's actually very, very cold, but it does warm up to four, over 40 degrees, we can see here, and we can certainly say that the performance remains stable all that time. So that's a pretty impressive result there by the iPhone 13 Pro. Basically, it heats up as you would expect. In fact, if you hold it on the side, because of those metal sides to it, the metal frame, it can actually be quite warm to the touch. According to my thermometer, it's around 30 degrees on the actual side bit of the phone. So really quite warm there, much warmer, 40 degrees plus on the rear there. And then once it heats up and it has to throttle slightly to keep that, it does actually do a good job. It is managing to play those 3D games and then keep that heat up going. And then the speed test G results are basically fairly consistent all the way through its lifetime. So I would say a good thumbs up there from uh, the iPhone 13 Pro. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this look at the battery life and the sustained performance of the iPhone 13 Pro. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, you can get me on Twitter uh, at Gary Explains. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.